It was a very defining turning point in my life, and it happened eight years ago when I decided to take a huge risk. I spent most of my life in the very beautiful but very small state of Vermont. Um, I was adopted. I was actually raised by my grandmother alone as an only child since the age of three. It was always just the two of us. Right after I turned 16, her health took a negative toll. And the doctor said that she really needed to live by herself without the stresses of a teenager around. She had to move into a retirement home. So I really had to jump into life and start living on my own. Uh, I bought my first car. It was an 85 Volkswagen Golf. It had 250,000 miles on it. And I think I paid about $600 for this car. I was paying rent in a small basement apartment and had to start working at this very early age to support myself. I became incredibly independent. Now, there's obviously a, a whole life story here that I may one day share. <laughs> Uh, but the short summary is that between the ages of 16 and 27, I had several different jobs and through a lot of hard work, I was able to finally build myself up to some of the upper management positions in the retail and hospitality industries and I finally started making some decent money. After about five years in my mid-twenties, this really started to look like my career path. And around that same time, I realized that the overall opportunity in a place like Vermont, for me, especially without a college education or any professional training, was very limiting in many different ways. On the one hand, I was grateful that I was able to have a nice salary and able to support myself, but on the other hand, I felt very trapped and very insecure about my future. I was never really actually happy, but like so many people that I knew, I had a job and it paid the bills and that was that. It was so depressing though because my passion was never in my job, it was always outside of it. And each day just seemed like a time lapse into the evening when I could finally go home and focus on something else. It was late summer 2007, uh, I was 26 years old, I was in a management position at the time for Starwood Hotels, and I had saved a little bit of money. At this point, I decided that I wanted to buy my dream car. <laughs> uh, I laughed because this was not the smartest move for me at all. Uh, but looking back, I totally understand why I did it. Um, I just had to have a BMW coupe. <laughs> it was a 330Ci, it was gray, with black leather interior, all the options. I absolutely love this car. And it put a smile on my face every time I got behind the wheel. Now, keep in mind that I lived in Vermont and a BMW coupe was pretty rare to be on the road and probably the least practical car I ever could have gotten. In fact, I even had to buy it out of state as there were none on any lots available in the state of Vermont. But I loved it. When I put my suit on and got ready in the morning, to go to work and I got in this car, I felt like James Bond. <laughs> I think that at this point, I was seeking something to really motivate me to try and do better at work and something to just kind of give me a little bit more of a structured goal. This was sort of that carrot on the stick, so to speak. Uh, it, it was something to keep me going and to keep me just focused. That's at least what I told myself. It was about four months into the car's ownership. I went into work one day and I was called in the office. I was let go. Uh, it was honestly the first time I'd ever been let go from a job in my life. And although I was pretty young, I had been working since such an early age that already at 26, I had been working for 10 years. I was absolutely devastated. I know now today, looking back, why I was let go. It, it had everything to do with the fact that I just, I didn't have a true passion that was needed to excel in that assignment. And trying to fake that or trick myself with the car or anything else for that matter, it was just a, it was just a bad situation waiting to happen. The next day after I was let go, it was New Year's Eve 2007, and I will never forget this day. Um, I was home, 
alone in my apartment. I had a roommate, but he was away for the holidays. I was sitting there in the upstairs bedroom, looking out the window late in the day at that gray, depressing, dismal, freezing, sub-zero winter weather. <laughs> and it was so quiet that I could hear a pin drop. And then it started to snow really hard. And I remember looking out at the grill of my car, almost having a staring contest with it, watching as the snow started to cover the hood. And I remember thinking to myself, what have I done? Um, I have this ridiculously expensive car and now there's no way to pay for it or for rent or anything else for that matter. This was a very scary and serious low point for me. Um, it was then that I really understood regret. It became clear what a reckless mistake I just had made. I just kept watching the snow continue to build up and eventually start to bury the car. And in some weird way, this was kind of foreshadowing my whole situation at that time. I felt trapped and I felt buried in something that was not only the car, but a but a life that I just needed to break away from somehow. It was about two or three days later, uh, my good buddy Greg called me and invited me out for a drink and a bite to eat. I think that he just wanted to see me and make sure I was okay and you know, talk to me about the whole job loss situation. I said okay and we met at this place called Flatbread, which is one of my favorite places to go in Burlington. I remember we sat there at the bar and Greg, being the amazing person that he is, said all the right things and tried to build up my confidence back to where it was and make me feel better about myself and in life. Uh, he reminded me how independent I am and how I'll always succeed no matter what. And then, God after knows how many beers, <laughs> in that moment, um, he says, wait a minute, I think I know of a buddy of mine that may be looking for help. And he owns an aviation company. Maybe you'd be a good fit. So right then and there, in that very moment, Greg whips out his cell phone and sends a text message to this guy. I mean, it was literally 11 o'clock at night, and what sent chills up my spine was the fact that this guy on the other end of the phone responded right back to him in that moment and said, yeah, send me his info. That aviation company was located in South Florida, and within two days, I was on a plane for a week-long interview process that resulted in me becoming the director of marketing for that company. When I flew back to Vermont after that interview, uh, it was to say goodbye. And this was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And to this day, I don't know how I did it. I had to say goodbye to everything that I had known all my life. I had to say goodbye to my friends and all the little familiar things that were home and made Vermont such a special place for me. Um, most difficult, the most difficult, was I had to say goodbye to my grandmother, um, who was really my mother. Um, you know, at, at this point, she was living in a retirement home, and this was hard because I really had a horrible feeling of, of guilt leaving her alone. But I knew that, I knew that I had to do this, and I knew that I would always regret not going and trying something new. I had to take this risk and capitalize on this opportunity to see where it would bring me and how it may change my life. So on January 17th, 2008, just a little over two weeks from losing my job, I finished stuffing all the really important personal items in that little BMW and I put the bigger things that I didn't need right away in a storage unit up in Vermont. I subleased out my room in the condo and I said goodbye to everybody. It was a Thursday and I started driving to Miami. I was scared and tears covered my face so bad that I had to pull over several times along the way. I finally arrived in South Florida on Saturday late that afternoon and a week later I started my new job. Now, whenever you start a new job, things are always exciting, and you're learning new things, new people, and all that good stuff. Well, as it turned out, I hated it. <laughs> I didn't end up liking the job at all. I didn't like the dynamics in the office, and once again, I was left in a position where I had very little to no passion for it. But I was grateful. <laughs> 
I was grateful for my friend Greg for making the connection, and I was grateful to have a job, one that would more than pay my bills. So I just sort of became and almost accepted the fact that I'm just going to be another guy living life with a job and career that he hates just to make ends meet. And that's really sad. I started to feel empty inside and very distant with who I knew I really was as a person. And that spark that's within me has been the very thing to keep me straight and persistent and on the right path for so long. It was starting to fade. I hated that feeling more than anything. And I started to think about moving back home to Vermont. Now things get interesting. March 7th, 2008, just two months after moving to South Florida, I went on the first date with my now wife, Adrena. We had dinner at the Grand Lux Cafe in Aventura Mall, and we started to fall in love from that point forward. She's everything I could ever have asked for. Beautiful, smart, successful, independent, and most importantly, makes me laugh. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, I think it was the second or maybe third date, and I met her sister, Trisha, and her fiance at the time, Kevin. Kevin plays a very important role in my story because it was him that actually helped me get started in my business that I now own today. First of all, Kevin is a very successful businessman, an MBA, the whole nine yards. This guy saw my talent as a photographer, saw my true passion for it, and basically pointed out that, you know, hey, this is what you should be doing with your life. And he was right. So with his help, we ended up making that transition happen. Now, up to this point, photography was really just a hobby and perhaps a creative outlet for me especially when I lived in Vermont. The photography started back in 2004 when I got my first digital SLR camera and I became obsessed with making pictures. I remember I loved that TV show, America's Next Top Model, and I actually even joined a local photography group that connected aspiring models with photographers. It was all just people that were starting out to help build a portfolio. I also did some aerial photography for a while. Back before drones were the, the main talk of the town, I actually uh, had built some custom design RC helicopters that would uh, capture aerials for some different realtors. And I even did some work for Stowe Mountain Resort when they built their new transitional lift. Um, and that was a big project for me. But then in 2006, I assisted a well-to-do wedding photographer in Vermont. And that was the point in which I really started to look at photography a little bit differently. This was now more about just taking pictures at a wedding. This was a business, and this was a lifestyle that just seemed incredible. This was something that I knew I would love to do, but at that time, I felt like I had a better chance of just winning the lottery than becoming a wedding photographer. So just as quickly as that thought entered my head, it left. And of course, went back to work, day in and day out, and it was just remained a dream. It was kind of like one of those moments where you think to yourself, ah, oh, if I did win the lottery and I was a millionaire, what would I do? <laughs> it was exactly like that. I never gave it another thought. So that's where Kevin really helped me. He was that push that I needed. He was a source of support and guidance that no one else could articulate. It was the start of the most successful thing I've ever done. He helped me start the business, get on with the marketing, and like building a fire, we started very small and slow, and sure enough, eventually it worked. It wasn't long, maybe six months, and then like a light switch. One day, I walked into work and I quit. Now, I'll tell you right now, that was one hell of a big risk. It took a lot of courage and a lot of support from everyone around me to do that. I had about four weddings, I think, on the books at that point for the future. And I just committed myself to work constantly and harder and longer than I had ever worked before to get more bookings and to make sure that I built momentum. At the end of the day, I just had to trust myself and know that I would always work harder and longer than anyone else to get what I wanted. And I've been that way since I was 17 years old, sitting in that rented basement room, paying bills on my own with no one to help me. This is where my nickname, Tiger, comes from. <laughs> Everyone that's close to me calls me that. <laughs> and now I sit here some eight years later with my wife, Adrena. We were married in 2010. My son, Austin, who was born in 2012. 
And of course, my photography business, which has been incredibly successful relative to anything that I've ever done before in my life. In the few more months, I'll be celebrating seven years that I've been a full-time pro. My business truly represents inspiration and I feel as a beacon for hope that anything is possible. In many ways, I feel that I've won that lottery. I live a dream life that I never, ever could have imagined. Photographers often say, oh, photography is my passion. And when I hear that, it falls on deaf ears because without the story and reason, it's just a silly cliche that everyone likes to say. Photography by itself is not my passion. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love making images. I feel that I have a very defined style and I'm good at what I do and this is in turn what pays the bills and has for a long time. But it's more than that for me. For me, it's a lifestyle. It's the ability to see my own efforts take shape inside of a business that I own and control. It's about not having to answer to someone else every day and sit at a desk wishing that I was doing something else, pretending to be someone that I'm not. My passion is the simple fact that photography has been the only thing in my life that has actually allowed me to be me. And that is what really makes me happy. If I didn't take the risks that I did, I never would have had any of this. And I feel that I would have always lived with some form of regret, forever. My life completely changed in every way, shape, and form the second I decided to step outside of my comfort zones. That was my reward. This, this is when my life really started. <laughs>